I'm using a safe edge file. There's no teeth on the edge of this file, so it doesn't do any cutting on the edges. Just on the flat face. So I can control what I want to cut. Now you can see the dull edge there and how much I'm changing the angle. This should be sharp enough to slice, about a 30 degree, kind of like a plane blade. You want it to go in and, and slice the wood away. When it's blunt, it tends to scrape. It still cuts, but it takes a lot of pressure to do it. And it doesn't slice smoothly, so it overloads the pilot thread and causes it to strip out. Now usually, if you've got a good drill bit, it only takes one or two strokes of the file to get it to come out. But this one is pretty dull, so I'm going to have to do quite a bit of filing on this one. Hopefully not all the ones that you're working on are going to take this much work. But the end result is what you're after. You want to have that edge right there. See how there's just a little bit of frost on the end right there? We want to have that edge sharp all the way over to the thread. a little bit more. Now we've got it. See how that edge goes right into that pilot thread? Both sides are nice and sharp now. I've rolled up a burr on the leading edge of that. 
and I can take a stone and just knock that burr off. I don't want to remove a bunch of metal off the top of this because I don't want to drop this cutting edge below that engagement with the pilot thread. Now we have the pilot thread cleaned up and we have the radial cutting edge that's cleaned up. I'm going to take this little bit of stone and I'm just going to knock that burr off. If you're patient, you can do this whole job with a stone. You could go in there with a stone and stone that edge and hone it to a perfect keenness. But for most of the work that a drill bit does, I think that would be wasted effort. Just knocking that burr off. Nice sharp edge on there. thing that'll make a difference in your cut you see how those side walls are kind of torn they're not really nice and smooth if you look at this hole they look a lot better this hole was done with this drill bit and this one has fairly good edges on these spurs that's what does the cutting on that We'll dress up the spurs on the Crescent Jenning and see if we can make it cut better. When I'm filing the spurs, I don't want to take anything off the top. I don't want to make them any shorter. When I'm filing the spurs, I always want to run the file this direction. And I don't want to shorten the spur. The spur has to stay long enough to scribe a circle before the radial cutting edge cuts the wood. This one is just barely there enough to do the job it needs to do. If I take this spur down below that radial cutting edge, I lose the scribing effect and this cutting edge now has to try and tear that piece of wood out. It makes a much rougher hole. If these spurs aren't sharp, if that leading edge isn't sharp so that it cuts into the wood like a knife blade, then 
it's going to have the same effect as if I had a piece of wood caught underneath the radial edge. It's going to tend to act like a shoe and this ramp is just going to jack this pilot thread right out of the wood. So I want to have the leading edge on that sharp. I want to have the leading edge on this radial cutting edge sharp. And I want to have this thread lead right into that radial cutting edge. And I need to have this angle about 30 degrees from this surface. And this should be at the original angle that the drill bit was made at. Sharp edge here, sharp edge there, and the timing correct. The Greenlee drill bit is in much better shape than the Crescent Jennings. It's only going to take just a little bit of filing. see the shine on that edge and how it goes clear over to the screw. This side I haven't done yet. Now we have a nice smooth cutting edge there. We're maintaining the original angle. Now I'll dress the spurs. You can see the shine on the edge of the spur. On both sides. Now I'll take the stone and just dress off the little burr that I rolled up on it. I don't want to take off anything off the outside of this cutter. don't want to change the angle of this top surface either. I just want to knock that burr off. Just want to knock the burr off the outside. Now you can see the nice sharp edge there. That's going to slice.
nice sharp edge there that's going to slice my angles good pilot thread is in good condition timing is correct this should drill a fine hole now that I've sharpened the radial cutting edge with the file I want to take this stone and I just want to knock off the burr I don't want to take anything off this steel I just want to knock the burr off that edge Same thing on these spurs. I don't want to take anything off the outside of it. All I want to do is just knock off that little burr that I've rolled up on there. Now I have a slicing edge. I have the radial cutting edge timed out with the thread. Same thing on this one. Spurs are sharp, radial edge is sharp. Screw threads in good condition. This one should bore a good hole. Let's give them a try. This Crescent Jennings auger bit had a problem. You could see that it was stopping and starting and pulling the thread out as I was doing that last hole. Someone had gone through and filed or damaged the outside edge of this spur and made this spur cut a smaller circle than the shank of the bit. So as soon as this spur got in there and it got down about that far, it started popping loose and I was having trouble getting it to engage. To fix that, I set the edge of the spur just like this. Now be careful the, of the thread. You don't want to have the thread against the material that you're using. Now I'm using a piece of railroad iron, but an anvil, a block of steel, pretty much anything. This is just a square edge. It just sits up against it like that. With it laying up against it like that, I took my hammer and I tapped on the back side. Now, I didn't have the radial edge up against this and I didn't have the screw up against it. I only had that spur. Now, I could have set it like this and hit it, but my chances of hitting something I don't want to hit are pretty good. So by setting it like that and tapping on the outside edge of the spur, I can roll just the tip of that thing. It's kind of like setting a saw blade. All I'm doing is moving that out so it scribes a bigger hole than the shank of the bit. Having done that, let's see what difference it made in the way this thing cuts. engaged. Now I'm 
not pushing down on the bit. I don't have my hand on top of it. All I'm doing is offsetting the force of my cranking on the handle. It's more awkward doing it this way, but this way I get to show you that I'm not pushing down. The auger bit's pulling itself right on through the piece of wood. Sticking out the bottom. Now to avoid blowing out the bottom, I'm going to cut through from the back side. Here, the hole is torn out for the pilot, so I have to use some down pressure to get it to go through. We can see how nice and smooth a hole that is. And that's the difference between a Russell Jennings type bit and an Irwin main bore type bit. The main bore is for rough drilling. And the Jennings type bit makes a smoother cut. I'll do the same thing here. This is a number 20 bit, that means it's an inch and an eighth diameter. That's a pretty good sized hole. And that's what two sharp bits will do. The other one doesn't cut as smooth a hole, but it's a lot faster. <laughs> 